Greetings loved ones and welcome back to another renovation video. Hopefully this one will be more positive than the last. There was some glimpses of positivity in the last reno vlog, but a lot just seemed to not go as planned. And so we're just starting off on a better note, a better vibe today. So I actually just sent off three packages. One, a birthday gift to our friend. Another as a return for Finley. So he ordered the wrong lawnmower blades because in a previous vlog, he was showing you guys sharpening the lawnmower blades, but they were very warped and had clearly been needing to be replaced for a while. So he ordered replacement blades. And then we realized that we accidentally got not the ones that we originally wanted. So I returned those. And then I also had to send back the mailbox that I have to return to that woman who I got her order for some reason off of Etsy. Anyway, I also picked up a P.O. Box application from my post office, which I'm very excited about. I don't have all of the things needed today to submit it. So hopefully, you know, by the end of this vlog, I'll have in the description box a new P.O. Box address for you guys because I miss having a P.O. Box. It's so fun. And like, you know, around the holidays, getting your Christmas cards is so cute. And I know a lot of you have small businesses and I just love having a P.O box and reading your letters and hearing about all of your lives and things like that. So I definitely wanted to pick up one of those. My mushroom is always hanging out in the corner of these videos, but um, my dogs are actually in the car with me right now. Thing one and thing two. And I just dropped off those packages, but now I think I'm going to go to the Home Depot because I need to get new mailbox numbers because we got a new mailbox and the old one had the numbers on it, but the new one doesn't. It's a whole thing. So I have to get new mailbox numbers. So I think I'm just going to go do that and see if Finley needs anything from Home Depot. I don't think he does, but I'm going to text him and ask just in case. But we're just doing a quick little errand day. And I also need to go to the dog store to get dog food for these ones. But I don't know if they're going to be open. I really hope they are. Oh, they're open till seven, actually. So I can go to Home Depot and I can go to the pet store. So sounds good, brother. It's a good day. Today is... Thursday, yeah. I'm gonna edit this into the intro of the video because I forgot to say this when I was recording the intro, but I just wanted to say, in the last vlog, I was talking about how I couldn't shower after Zumba because of the polyurethane coating on the floor, but last night, Finley and I both were able to shower. So I'm clean now. I just wanted to say that. We were able to do that because the first coat took a while to dry, and so we had basically like a day in between of waiting for it to dry before he has to sand it and we both were like well we smell really bad and it's disgusting and sweaty and hot outside so we both showered and I also hooked up an AC unit into where we sleep and it's just been amazing because the rest of the house is like already closed off because of the floor fumes but now we have that separate side that's not only fumeless but it also has beautiful stunning air conditioning who's just Okay, <laughs> so things are looking up for us <laughs> since the last video. Just wanted to say that too. All right, brothers, I'm going in and I'm going out. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, I picked up my little stickers, my reflective adhesive address markers, and obviously I'm not gonna show them to you. 20 minutes later. I'm at the One Stop Country Pet, back with my beachers. One debt to society later. I think that the dogs had a good time in there, but I'm a little upset he spaghetti at this one. So Larry has pretty much always been an extremely friendly dog, especially with humans, but he, you know, was very socialized when I first got him in LA and I would take him to dog parks and he would see dogs on the street and he was never like growly. But ever since we got Rue, please comment down below if your dogs, like once they became a sibling, started just doing little like, you know, under their breath. Like we were just at the dog store. Normally my dogs are totally fine. So this woman came up with her pug and was like, oh, do you want to say hello? Is he friendly to Larry? And I was like, yeah, he is. Cause Larry was the one like lunging forward, trying to sniff him. And then as soon as the dog acknowledged Rue, he was like, Ugh. Like, don't go near her. And I think it's just because he's extremely protective of Rue, but it can just be a little inconvenient. And like, 
you know, I don't want anybody to think that I have an aggressive dog just because he does stuff like that with Rue. And it scares me because I don't want him to like lunge at anybody. We have like retractable leashes. So I'll always like lock their leashes when they're sniffing a new dog so that they can't like, you know, lunge forward and do anything. I don't think he would, but he did growl. And the woman was like, oh, guess not, you know, to him being friendly. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like he normally is. But then I realized that he was also standing by a box of bones and he was very interested in the bones. So maybe he was also trying to protect those, but I don't know, man, taking the dogs out on the town. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to socialize them more, especially Rue, because she is a farm dog. And like, although she is human obsessed, I think that a lot of times, like I talked about this in a vlog, actually, when this dog had like escaped his owner who was working at the barn on my in-laws property and like the house is right near the barn. So he ran from the barn over to our property and it was this big husky and Rue acted like he was like a wildebeest. He was just trying to sniff her and say hi to her and she was just like, I, 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 like doing yelping and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of moments like that where I'm like, I need to socialize her with big dogs more. I don't know how we will go about that like safely and conveniently because I don't wanna like drive super far just for her to interact with bigger dogs. but. Like, like I do want bigger dogs down the line. I think that, you know, if we were to ever get guardian animals, like farm guardian dogs, great Pyrenees are my loves and I just want them so bad. So obviously we'll talk about that down the line. Um, but at the same time, it's like, maybe it'll be easier for my dogs to adjust to having a big dog around on the property if they saw them be raised from babies, you know, like from little tiny puppies who they knew were harmless to them and not gonna hurt them oh my god she is being so fucking funny right now i want to like grab the camera without making her move her position i've just been like nonchalantly scratching her while talking to you guys and she's just absolutely in heaven yeah i'm talking about you dogs you kind of probably had fun in there but you didn't really have good behavior i didn't get them any treats or anything like that i just got them restocks of their evangers dog food i also was thinking about getting some food for myself but i already have a ton of groceries at home so i think we might just head back and listen to some mac miller along the way because today is the five year anniversary of his death so i've just been in my mac miller mood please don't do that on camera rude that is very impolite later all right i just got home and i'm about to have a little sandwich it's just my regular sammy almost every single day i have this for lunch or early dinner it's actually getting quite late but i'm also having some electrolytes hanging out with my little roodle doodle and waiting for larry to come back from wherever he is i think he went on a little adventure in the woods but i trust him a few minutes later just as i expected hanging out in the woods he loves life in Vermont. The following day. Hey y'all, it's the next day now. Last night was the first NFL game, the Chiefs versus the Lions. And I'm a Chiefs fan, okay? In the past like four years, I've become a Chiefs fan. Really just once I started watching the NFL and was like, okay, go off. This team is kind of iconic, you know? I love me some Patrick Mahomes and Mrs. Mahomes, honestly. I follow Brittany on Instagram and I love watching her like mommy lifestyle. And I also love me some Travis Kelsey. Dare I say the most handsome man in the NFL? You know, he is in the running for me this year. Every time I say this, I think about like those men who watch women's gymnastics or something like that and they're like I just watch it for the leotards you know like that's me with the NFL but it's like with the pants <laughs> oh, I'm outing myself anyway I'm about to work out right now Rue is hanging out over here today is her gotcha day we got her on this day in 2019 so she's been in our family for four years she's living her best life larry's gotcha day is in early february so i marked that on the calendar as well because we don't always celebrate gotcha days it's really only when we remember but i remembered today anyway i'm about to do a workout and i'm going to do this one from mad fit 20 minute full body beginner i love mad fit workouts because she explains the moves and like tells you what to tighten and what area you're targeting rather than just like playing music and going for it you know and she'll kind of remind you about your form and she's super great at like offering modifications for if something's hurting you so 
Love it. I've just been feeling a little bit like frustrated with my results or lack thereof. Maybe it's because I have a lack of consistency with like the workouts that I'm doing and I'm changing it up a lot for my knee, which I also got a knee brace for. It's a band to like support your knee, especially when you're like walking and going about your day. I also need to put on my orthopedic shoes. But yeah, I'm just still feeling some pain and I just figure like might as well just try to do some other workouts and just see if, you know, I can keep up with the consistency and see more results and feel better in general. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Bring the knees up to meet the hands, staying light on those toes. Again, staying light on those toes, keep that core engaged. Pain. And out. Reach that arm up and over, arms are nice and strong. It's like she knew I was trying to rest my arm on my leg. <laughs> These are such a good jumping jack modification. Sometimes upper do body is strong, left. shoulder blades are down the back. If you want to watch the rest, just watch her video, I'll link it below. I sweated so much. I also did a Grow with Joe back workout. I'll link that down below too. So I did 20 minutes of Mad Fit and then 10 minutes of Grow With Joe. And I'm just standing in front of this fan, cooling down. And I'm gonna stretch a little bit more because Mad Fit doesn't have stretches at the end of her workouts. So I'm just gonna like do some intuitive stretching and then I'm gonna go shower because I'm very sweaty and I wanna shower before Finley comes home with a paint tray so he can finish the second coat of polyurethane on the floors. And he like sanded a little bit yesterday, but it was kind of gummy up it was just very frustrating so oil based okay we've totally learned our lesson with using oil based polyurethane and we'll totally go water based in the future but anyway I have to stretch and shower before he gets back because otherwise I won't be able to use the bathroom for the rest of the day I just want to show you the reality of our life right now so I walk in with the respirator like pressed onto my face like this and then I have to brush my teeth at the kitchen sink so I have to do it really fast hard to vlog this at the same time. Okay, my plant is kind of in the way, but this is what I do. Hold your breath. You get the idea. Uh, so I brush my teeth outside, rinse off in here, and then I'm gonna make my breakfast. I'm only allowed to take off my respirator in the wing or outside. Finley's been very gung-ho about this. Not that I'm not, but I just like am forgetful. And he's like, don't be forgetful. These fumes are known to be cancer causing agents and I don't want to risk it with either of us. And I'm like, you're right, you're right. But this is a normal breakfast for me. I've been having probiotic yogurt, granola in bulk from my co-op, frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries, and some days if I'm feeling crazy, I'll add in a little handful of chocolate chips. It's randomly raining right now, like just a couple of big drops, but it's also really clear skies, so I'm pretty confused. I think it's just this cloud. The rain is totally raining on my breakfast parade, but I also wanted to say that there's pecans in here as well, and this will hold me over for a lot of hours until lunch. Check me out, guys. I got new heels from Vibea. I actually, I worked with Vibea in the past, so hopefully my promo code still works. I got these heels for my cousin's wedding in because I don't really have a pair of heels that fit anymore or are, you know, a reasonable height. I have one pair of yellow heels and I just never wear them because they're like really tall. But these are like a chunky heel, normal. Hopefully I won't have to wear them with my freaking knee support brace. But they're very cute, nude, will match with anything. One extremely annoying shift later. Finley's doing the polyurethane, that's why I look like this. I've been cleaning up little like splatters of the poly through the floor cracks. But then I came in here and the dogs were acting really distraught. And I was like, holy shit, I hear raindrops. It was just storming really bad and look. These are all leaks. It even was leaking on our bed from up here. We knew that there was previous leaks, but the seller told us that they only happened in Hurricane Irene in 2012, but like that's clearly not just the case. And we just got a heavy rain and it spilled everywhere. And one of these isn't even covered. I have this one here, but there's another one right here. So, ah! 
don't know what to do other than replace the roof. Trying to stay calm, but this is very bad. Very bad. We have to move the bed again. Okay, checking in here at 6, 12 p.m. The power has been out for over an hour, definitely going on two hours at least now. And we just looked at the power outage map. It is dark. There are like 10,000 people affected. So we are certainly not alone. And we also know we are certainly not going to be the first ones. <laughs> who are brought power back. So this is just another reason why we need a generator. And it's hard in situations like this not to just kick yourself and be like, how could you be so stupid? Why didn't you prepare more? But I didn't think that a thunderstorm would knock us out of power like significantly so, you know what I mean? I thought it was more like snow and hail and like crazier things. But dude, this leak, whoo wee, wow, okay. So I mentioned earlier that the seller said that the leaks only happened during Hurricane Irene. I call bullshit. Also, the leaks have gotten significantly worse. We moved our mattress, which you guys saw. The roof is basically leaking like directly over where our bed was in that window. Do you guys remember when I put the bed there and I said, this is ugly on this wall over here? And it was water damage. The reason it looks like that is because this window is not properly sealed or placed in and it pours water. I'll overlay a video of all of the leaks right now, but on that window, it is just completely a lost cause. It's pouring down everywhere. So this is happening. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say other than this is what's happening right now. And Finley is actually in the other room because I was trying to like not talk about this for some reason. Well, the reason being he already told the story time that I'm going to insert into the bedroom renovation. But basically the night that I got back from my first Zumba class, so this was on Tuesday night, like when I was ending off the last vlog, I just ended up not putting this in and just kind of summarizing it as I can't take a shower, I can't go upstairs because there's polyurethane coating all over the floors. Also, so that night, as soon as I got home, the polyurethane was leaking through the cracks of the floor and just straight up raining down, dribbling everywhere in the kitchen dining room area. So the next day, Finley went about sealing off all those cracks with tape so that when he did a second coat of poly that it wouldn't happen again. And it was just straight up a band-aid thing that we did and prayed to God that it would work. And as I'm sure a lot of you watching this are thinking, yes, most band-aid fixes do not work. So now we have polyurethane raining down in the kitchen and actual rain raining down in the wing. So we are feeling very much so like the money pit movie right now, you know, like this is dark. We got like a water test done, uh, like a moisture test for our inspection and it was raining on the day of our inspection, but I guess it just wasn't raining hard enough to cause a big enough leak that maybe it would be able to tell on the little moisture sensor. I don't know how that did not come up. We got a very good inspector, but now obviously we're seeing how bad this water damage truly is and need to immediately have our roof replaced. Immediately. <laughs> Oh my God. This is just like one of those things where I want to cry because of how absurd it is, but I know that I shouldn't cry. I should just maybe laugh at the absurdity of life or kind of giggle at my stupidity and think about how I don't have a generator, but we do have like a little car battery jumper and it has a couple of little slots in it, like USB slots so that we can charge our phones. But right now we're just trying to, you know, enjoy the daylight while it's happening. And I guess I should just figure out where all of my candles are as well. I don't know where those are currently and they would be helpful as it gets very dark because we're currently sharing one flashlight because we don't have any batteries for our other lanterns. 
Wow, this is really, really just showing me how unprepared we are for a situation like this. And I know I mentioned this in a past vlog, but in Oregon, we went through a big power outage, like multi-day long power outage, and I was home alone for it. And Finley came home right when the power got back on. He was like out of town for something. I forget what he was doing. I was just trucking along all by myself. And after that, Finley was like, all right, I'm going to buy a generator on my way home and we can have that. And then, you know, it was kind of like a rush purchase and we didn't do a lot of research on it. So we ended up just returning the generator and never needing to have one again. But now clearly we need to have one again. And actually somebody just drove up our driveway and Finley was like, babe, somebody's here. And we went outside and it was this guy John who is apparently one of our neighbors like kind of backing up to our property and he said that the rain is so bad in his driveway right now that he can't physically get up his driveway which is shocking that he was able to get up ours because ours is also very bad but he was like do you mind if I like cut through your property like walk through it and plug my generator in and obviously we were like of course you can do that but when we got back inside i asked finley i was like so he's doing the generator for himself <laughs> not for both of us right and finley was like i mean the generators yeah it's just for his house he just needs to access his property from ours i was like totally yeah <laughs> me just like relying on somebody else to like drive up my driveway and be like got a generator for you like that's literally uh i was praying for a blessing of that sort country living can be absolutely deranged and unwell sometimes and this is the purest example of that dude i cannot believe these leaks i have to show you them i have to show you them right now everywhere there is a bowl or a bin there is a leak this one just keeps splashing everywhere this one was right where the bed was both of these were and that bowl and then this is really the puddle of a lifetime this is leaking into this bowl this entire windowsill so this is what i was talking about when i was like ugly getting bad vibes from this when i set up our bed here and this is exactly why it looks like that um, we're also running out of bowls, so I'm using the dog bowls currently, but that's obviously not going to work out long term. And I'm also going to need to dump this pretty soon. Got just towels down currently. Where this little Monstera is, is a leak, and I just decided to put the Monstera there because then at least something was soaking up the water, but maybe a bad idea. I don't know if the roof water is the best thing to water my plant with, probably not. When our ceiling caved in in Oregon, it ruined my philodendron just because of all of the like ceiling sh that fell into the plant, but that was like more ceiling insulation and stuff. Anyway, another leak here. Another leak here. Oh, just stepped on another one right here. Didn't know that was there. I completely don't have enough bowls anymore, so I don't even know what to do. Another one here, another one here. This is the absolute tragedy of the situation right now with all of the polyurethane leaks. So Finley is wearing gloves and then he has like a big thing of mineral solvent that removes the polyurethane and dissolves it from the floor. And I was helping him. I did most of these little things. Those are also leaks back there, those two paint trays um, but yeah, we just get like shop paper towels, which are like thicker than regular paper towels and don't shred as easily and dip them in mineral solvent and then wipe up all of the polyurethane and then leave that paper towel down so that if it keeps dripping, it will at least fall onto the shop towel. The dogs are very, very confused and very concerned and I can understand why. This is a bad day. Rue, I'm sorry that you're not having a good gotcha day celebration. Aren't you so happy that you live here even though our life is a little deranged, be sure? Ugh, Larry, I don't know what to do. The power is significantly out. Like, should I go buy a generator from the store? Is that a good idea? Is the power out in Massachusetts? Because it's out in most of Vermont. I also had to bring in new clean sheets to put on our bed now that we moved it because this leak, this is on my side, dude. Like, I 100% am going to have to start sleeping with my head up there because this is disgusting and then there was another leak right here and then there's some lower down there as well but i took the sheets off so that i can wash them whenever we get power again but it's also all over our duvet cover because i was actively cleaning up all of the polyurethane leaks when it started storming this bad um so i didn't realize for a while that it was leaking all over our bed which is very unfortunate because 
I fully just put this duvet back on and washed it the other day, and now it's covered in the ceiling, disgusting water. Sh girl car, girl car, girl car, girl car. <laughs> I'm gonna edit this in before this long clip, but sorry if you can see the red flashing light on my face. It's from my car not being on. I just don't wanna like waste a bunch of gas just sitting here talking to you. I put on my respirator, got the dogs, and ran out to the car. Finley is still cleaning up the polyurethane leaks because if they harden for too long, it's just like, you know, no way in hell you're getting that off. And I'm very hungry and feeling feral right now, honestly. And all of the food, I don't want to open the fridge because when you open the fridge during a power outage, it leaks the cold air out. So I'm not going to do that. So I ate a Lara bar and now I have my pecans and I'm in here with the doggies and we're about to go get a generator from Home Depot. And you know when you just like come out to your car because your car just feels really safe and nice? Feels like, like why does my car feel safer than my house? <laughs> I'm gonna put these away. I don't wanna do a pecan mukbang with you. It's just quite funny how the other day I was like, this is gonna be a more positive vlog than the last one. And then this is the worst thing that's happened in this house yet. <laughs> Like, this is just, like I said, this is money pit level. When we first moved into this house, we watched that movie, but we only made it probably like 20 minutes in because it was just so over the top. I'm really struggling right now not to be pissed off at the seller for straight up lying to us about the state of the roof. Like, we knew it was bad. That's why we hired roofers, you know what I mean? But we weren't going to decide on them until this upcoming Monday. And it's Friday, and we have to make a decision ASAP. Who are we going to use? What material? We definitely want to get a roof that will actually last, like, decades. But then, at the same time, you think about, oh, metal roofs are really expensive. Maybe asphalt shingle would be better, even though it's horrible for the environment. There's just so many things things when it comes to homeowning where it's like, should we just spend the bigger bucks on doing this? Or should we go the cheaper route that will like still be good? And we probably won't have to deal with the roof again in our lifetime of living at this house. But then again, do we want to be like the seller and like sell somebody a house in the future? I'm not talking about like, we're immediately going to move out of this house. Like we're obviously making it what we want to live in and everything like that and raise our family in. But we do talk about that, like selling the house down the line. The average amount of time that an American lives in their house is seven years. So I don't know what will happen in seven years. Seven years ago, Finley and I weren't even together. So a lot can happen in that time, you know? I don't know what my point of this is. Just to say, I guess, that I don't want to be like a shitty person and do a quick fix band-aid roof that is not going to be lasting on this home for a long period of time. Also, that window is f dude i knew we had to replace that window but like holy shit. when it snows oh my god the amount of heat that's gonna escape through there if that's the amount of moisture that came in from just a freaking rainstorm come on dude be for real oh my god finley and i are feeling both right now like just super overwhelmed if i'm being honest with you we both had a moment where we looked at each other and we're like this is a big a big bad day <laughs> Oh, but I'm just, you know, chilling out here, getting my mind right, eating my damn nuts, cuddling my dogs. I feel so bad. The dogs are incredibly distraught. They just like don't know what's happening and why they can't be in the bed and why is it raining in the bed? <laughs> why is there no bedding on the bed now? I know, Rue. Larry's just curled up next to me. I'm gonna look at the power outage map again, eat my nuts, and check back in when I have something to say. One hour later. Choosing which generator to get. Got a lot of options. Well, I guess actually not that many. This is saying like a five gallon of propane will run it for only like six and a half hours. Oh shit. One pathetic soap story later. I'm using my light beam and just fed the doggies and Finley's gonna set up the generator, but we got a generator that has dual fuel, so propane and gas. We got an extra large pizza over there and some cords and some gas, even though one of our gas tanks had a damn ass hole in it. All right, there you go, buddy. All right, so as everybody probably knows by this point in the vlog, this day is 
So, after my miserable polyurethaning and cleaning up a miserable mess with the tape, I also simultaneously, it was like pissing down rain in the other part of the house. It was like raining polyurethane in one part and raining rain in the other part. God, today has been terrible. So we went and bought a generator. This is a uh, champion generator. It's like 6,000 some watts or something like that. I don't really know much about generators, but it seemed to be the best one that they had. Looks like five gallons of gas will get you about 11 hours on this thing. Um, we can run it with propane too, so when we get the propane hooked up, we'll be good to go there. I've never used a generator. Uh, I've never set one up. This isn't really how I wanted to do it for the first time but uh, I guess I'll do it anyways. I'm concerned about oh, many different things right now. I'm concerned about the fact that it's supposed to rain for the next week and that we have no cover to put this generator under. I mean, I can figure something out tomorrow, but I can't figure it out tonight. It's not raining right now, luckily, so hopefully it just stays off all night. I mean, we can probably turn the generator off when we go to bed. It's just that our fridge and freezer, you know, would be shut off then. So I'm worried about water with this extension cords I'll be plugging into the generator because that just is idiotic to plug things into outlet outside in the rain. I mean, you just don't do that because it's stupid. And then I'm concerned about the fact that it's like a million dollars to buy a thick gauge extension cord, like 10 gauge, 50 feet. That's the thickest they had. They had it in 25 foot sections, but they say keep the generator 25 feet away from the house so that doesn't even help me and it says for the 50 feet which is like the minimum i would need even with 10 gauge it drops it down to like 15 amps or something like that and the gfci outlets on this thing are are 20 amp so i'm like you're not supposed to do that. I mean, true, that's what you're doing probably anytime you're running an extension cord. That extension cord is not gonna be rated for the same thing the outlet is, I guess. So maybe I'm tripping too hard about it. But the point is that, you know, if I have 200 feet of 14 gauge, and that says 13 amps at 100 feet. So 13 amps, that's smaller than any breaker you're gonna have in your house. Say I plugged in 15 amps worth of sh onto this extension cord that's only rated for 13 amps instead of the outlet triggering or the breaker or whatever the f triggering the extension cord will fail before that so if i'm running too hard a load it could get hot catch on fire stuff like that which is like really f sketchy but i don't know what else people do i mean that must be what people do because what else would you f do i know you can tie them into your house and stuff and i mean i would do that if it wasn't like 9 p.m on a friday night right now so this is the best i got i'm just gonna be as careful as i can we're trying to put it close to the refrigerator because that's probably the heaviest load we're gonna have on it i mean i know the refrigerator is well it should be like six or seven amps it's well under 13 and there should be no surging or anything like that so we should be good there and uh the other stuff we're running is not gonna be very intensive uh only thing is the well pump i guess i'll just set up the camera Things are like 250 pounds or something like that. So this one doesn't feel that heavy to me, but the other one said it was that heavy. So I assume this is pretty similar. Struck fins, I should probably read those. That looks like wheel stuff. Mm, I'm getting pretty serious front feet vibe from those little gas panel. This is to hook it up to a propane. I don't actually know what this is yet. One last goodie. Oh, oil. It's a, <laughs> it's a good thing they give this to you because I didn't by Lord, I don't use gas engines except for cars now because I suck at them and I always break them. So I avoid them at all costs, but I could not avoid it here. So I just kind of shifted it off a little bit and I think that'll let me get here to do this. I don't know if it matters if you put the bolt in this way or the other way. Yeah, it's not overwhelmingly apparent. I don't think it makes a difference. I'll just be consistent. So I'll have to tighten these on for real in a second. Just hand tighten them there. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna try to get it off. Beautiful folks, that's how you do it. That was sarcastic. So yeah, don't go too far. There we go, that's progress. Oh yeah. Oh, it's pretty easy to move now. Yeah, we read good things about this. I think it'll be a pretty nice one, I hope. Alright, now I put some oil in it. This is like my worst fear as soon as I have to do like a real man shit with an engine. Oh god, I get flashbacks to ruining everything I've ever touched. Okay, well fortunately for me they could not have made this f 
easier. So there's a little oil thing right here. You just take the little dipstick out. Yeah, there's no oil in these things. So if you just try to turn it on, like I probably would have if they didn't mail me this oil, you would just ex not explode it, but you would ruin it. Uh, okay, and then conveniently, it takes exactly 1.1 liters, which is exactly how much I have here. They probably knew that before they sent it to me. Stick my little funnel in there. Oh, too fast. Balls. One time I tried to have a motorcycle before I ruined everything and I was changing the oil on it. I left the oil cap off when I was putting the new oil in and I just drained like, I guess luckily it was a motorcycle, but like a couple quarts of oil straight into the ground. I felt like such an idiot. I'm like, yeah, I brought my own bags to the store today, but I, <laughs> but I also poured out like three quarts of oil into the fucking dirt. Oh, so stupid. Right, that made this pretty easy. I didn't even have a thing to unscrew that I could have messed up. At least this far. Probably have to change the oil later. I've really been trying to cut this stuff out of my life. Not just for environmentalism, but for my sanity and for my masculinity. So I don't feel like such an idiot every time I ruin it. Oh, that's pretty damn full. Well, I guess you put the cap back on. Everybody probably really cares about seeing that. Alright, now it's oiled up. We're almost good to go here. This thing's actually really simple. Y'all see her out there? Just enjoying the evening. Yeah, she's looking good. Alright, well now it's time to find out just how long is 100 feet. I only do calculations in football fields, and I know it's a third of one of those, but I haven't been on one in a long time. Okay, well, for once, my cord won't be tangled up. Okay, so that's plugged in. Let's take this baby for a stroll. Got the end right here. We're walking. I feel like I've gone a long ways already. Pretty good. Damn, I'm still going. I know y'all can't really see how far I walked, but it's been like almost 100 feet. I think, holy sh**, 100 feet is longer than I thought. Am I dragging the generator? I'm in the woods now. Oh god, man, I did it again. I overkilled with the f***ing hundred feeders. Okay, well, whatever. I have a problem where every time I buy extension cords, I convince myself that I need the longest one that they sell. And then every time I need to use an extension cord, I have like 90 extra feet with me, and it's such a pain in the ass. So I told myself, next time I buy extension cords, don't f***ing buy a hundred foot long extension cord. God, it's on camera. Sorry, Meg. Oh. Whoa, that was really ugly. Oh. Wow, 100 feet is really long, everybody. Don't buy a 100 foot power cord unless you like really need 100 feet. I'm gonna go look at my all my power cords. They're all probably like 100 feet, like I said. Oh look, it's another 100 foot power cord that I just bought, thank God. Kind of spooky in here, feels like a horror movie. Okay, we got like, that's probably like a 100 foot power cord. It's probably like 100, 150 feet. That's uh, so like a 100 foot power cord. And then I just jumped straight into these six way things. But what's done is done. Here's what I'm regretting is basically every foot of extension cord, there's more resistance in the wire. Like I could pull a heavier draw if it was only 25, 50 feet, if that's all I actually would end up needing. But because they're all 100 feet, it doesn't matter if it's five feet away. All that power is running through 100 feet of cord and all that resistance that 100 feet of wire brings reduces the amount of overall draw you can put through it. I could have done this smarter and cheaper and better. Time to fire this thing up pretty much. So I'm reading my little instructions here. Took it out of the box, attached the wheels, added oil, moved to the outdoors, add fuel, and then it says do not plug in. So I'm gonna unplug all this. So now there's nothing plugged in. So now I'm gonna fill it with gas. I hate these modern gas cans. I barely even use the old ones and I still hate these. Oh shit. There's some stupid plastic bar in the middle of this hole, so I can't just let it loose or it splashes everywhere. I didn't think this would take two hours when I set up the camera. Is there anybody timing this? One eternity later. God, this is why I hate gas. Oh, I'm spilling everywhere. I smell like sh**. This is actually really pissing me off. It's a little, oh, it's a little grace. Too much to ask for. Uh. I feel like I'm supposed to unscrew something for like airflow or something. This can's not vented, so it's just going, stopping, going, stopping. I know it has to have been like five minutes already. One minute per gallon. Oh my God. How big is this tank? Oh, this sucks. Fill up already. This is gonna be like 25% me putting the generator together, 75% me standing here with a gas can and my back tire. Eventually. Alright, that's gonna be fine for me. Jesus, how is that not full yet? Okay, well, that's step one. It only took two hours. Oh, this 
This is the part I'm really nervous for, okay guys? Select fuel operation. I'm gonna be using gas, which is to the left. So I just twist this thing to the left. But it says twist it all the way to the green thing. Y'all can't even see, so I'm just gonna have to take my word for it. Starting the engine. Manual start. Move the choke lever to the choke position. Pull the recoil cord. Move the choke lever to the run position. Is that it? That's pretty easy. If only I knew what a choke was. Well, this is probably the most boring thing you've ever watched in your life, considering as I just spent two hours filling it with gas and I can't find where a choke is. Is this it? I guess so. All right, I found it. Don't freak out. So now for the fun part, I think I just pull this lever and then I just switch the choke to the on position. Where'd that thing go? This is actually the best part of gas engines. Good morning guys, it's Saturday now and I literally just woke up so I'm in my big sleep shirt and I'm currently drying the big wet spot on my side of the bed that is still there. I think it's just gonna take a while so I set up this little fan and aimed it like directly on it and then I have this other fan, just kinda double action, I don't know. But I need to put these sheets on today. It was not that annoying to sleep without sheets. We did it for a while. When we first moved into this house, we just slept with a blanket because all of the sheets were not washed and so I just like ended up going to the laundromat. You guys saw that if you were watching the moving vlogs. Anyway, I'm just like looking at all of the aftermath now in here and just being like, holy sh brother. Yesterday was a day. Also, this water is disgusting. That's really gross. This is our biggest failure point right here. Oh, Larry. Also last night when we got the generator hooked up, did I forget to tell you guys that by the way? I think I might have because I told Instagram, but I didn't tell you, but we had one extension cord running to here with like a six strip power cord and I plugged in my electronics, the fans, and that's it, and a lamp. And then we had another extension cord going there. We could plug in Finley's Starfield addiction or the air conditioner, that was a good setup. And then we had another extension cord, a third one, you can't really see, but the fridge is right by that door. And we had another one plugged in there. But yeah, we like draped it up here so that the dogs wouldn't be so annoyed by all of this wire. But we're gonna take all of this down today. Hopefully the power just stays. It came back last night at 5 a.m. Well, I guess early this morning at like 5 a.m. Also, Giorgio's pizza in Greenfield was fun fire we got this extra large pizza last night and granted they do cut it a little weird like i don't really always get pizza that looks like this but we had so much of it it was delicious we had more than half but after the night and me sleeping on it i was telling finley like it's just really a struggle for me to not be mad at the seller because he had to have known right? And Finley was like, I don't know, maybe he really didn't. And I also got some messages from people that were like, you should sue or something like that. Like they're supposed to say this in their disclosure agreement. And he did say, like I said, in the disclosure agreement, you know, the only time the roof has leaked is since 2012. But then we also knew the roof was 28 years old. So it's like, is this true? <laughs> but either way, he was very clear that he was barely at this house. Like he works a trade job, he was constantly going out of town for work, and probably during a lot of like, you know, these huge storms, maybe he wasn't here. I don't know, I'm just giving him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he didn't know that this was happening. But I will say, when we first moved into this house, do you guys remember that the night before our closing, we slept on this floor, like right here? <laughs> on moving blankets. So when that happened, we opened this door to the wing and I remember being hit with like a wafting kind of wet smell. And I told Finley, I was like, kind of stinks in here. And a lot of the windows were open. So I just kind of chalked it up to humidity, but that was literally right after Vermont flooded. 
and granted we're not in a flood zone here this area that we live in specifically was not as bad of flooding as say central vermont around the capital montpelier but anyway i just thought about this last night and i'm bringing it up now because i was just i had a light bulb go off where i started theorizing you know it's not good when women start theorizing but what if the listing agent so the real estate agent that represents the seller during the time when we were in between our closing date and when we had decided we wanted this house it was like two months and the seller was like not really here as he never really was so the listing agent would come and like install oh you can't really see them but there's like new fire alarms like smoke detector things and she checked on a handful of other things you know what i mean maybe during that time she might have cleaned up some kind of a large amount of rain and quite possibly that was not disclosed to us because there was such heavy rain in Vermont during that time. I just like have to think that during that time there had to have been a leak and that's why it smelled wet in here. But no one told us, you know what I mean? So anyway, I'm not going to sue anybody. I'm just mad that I have to pay thousands of dollars pretty immediately upon moving into this house to replace the roof. But hey, that's life. That's what the real people say. That's life. What is the Frank Sinatra lyrics? That's not it. The real people? Who are they? <laughs> anyway, I need to wash all of the sheets that I ripped off of the bed last night in the duvet cover and just like make everything look nice again. Wash all these disgusting towels and just get my life together. But today, the big thing on the agenda is picking our roofer. We already like kind of know who we're gonna pick who's not as expensive as the guy who came on Monday, but also we need to just like crunch some numbers, shingle, metal, longevity, price point, all that kind of good stuff. So that's the tasks of today. Happy freaking weekend. This is what we're doing. <laughs> I sound like this I'm wearing my respirator down here because the polyurethane is still curing so just have to wear it all in this part of the house I just realized it definitely leaked onto my washing machine from up here last night so that's not good leaked on my dryer too the front doors are actually above here and yesterday evening when it was raining really heavily there was just like a lot of water building up in front of the door which we know we have to replace the front door but anyway i'm going to show you how to use my speed queen tr5 baby i made a tiktok about this and then i ended up never uploading it because i thought it was kind of boring but i'll show the vlog because you guys think everything's cool so i'm putting it on cool large heavy soil because we got a lot of stains on there normal eco cycle start see you in like 45 minutes meanwhile all right so i got the camera out today to uh change the lawnmower blades but first i have something very exciting to show you all and it's right behind me so wow do you see how I did the wires there? That's that's what I'm showing you. Pretty tight, huh? I took the 200 footers, wrapped them around. Now, I can just pull this bad boy out whenever I need it. This little handle still works. No problem. See me move it right now? But actually, I'm gonna leave it out here. I never, I forgot to uh, tighten these little feet up properly, so I'm gonna do that right now. Now, I'll tell you what, this uh, ratchet set, I don't know what about it. I mean, I guess I do, it's a ratchet set, but it is so useful, I use this all the time. Meg gave me uh, express orders to make it interesting if I was gonna film changing the uh, lawnmower blades. So I'm under a little pressure here. Well, I think probably my best solution would be to just not film this whole thing, but I was just gonna film one tightening because I thought that might be nice. So this set comes with two of these things, so, you know, really convenient. What the f Is it two different sizes? Why would they do that? It's a 10 millimeter on the front and something else on the back. 13. Yep. Yeah, so if you just set these to one to tighten and one to loosen or whatever, so they're having resistance against each other, it's really easy to just tighten these things up like this. It's way harder with just regular wrenches and so that's a good job right there. So I'm not gonna film the other three because that'd be pretty boring, I think. Great example of how everything just takes longer than it should. This is supposed to be like less than five minutes. Well, guess what? Because I only hand tightened the bolts before and forgot to properly tighten. The vibrations from running the generator for a few hours loosened one side enough to drop a bolt out somewhere, probably while I was rolling it down here. I can't find it. So I got three out of four bolts. With only one bolt, it can still rotate like this. So, I mean, it's fine. It'll just be sitting in storage, but I can't find 
uh, replacement bolt that I have to be the right size, so that is frustrating. That was actually pretty good. I just eyeballed how far to put these out and I was pretty close, but I had to do some adjustment as you saw. I got these the proper way now with the little ridge here, you know, obviously to stop the tire from going forward. Got the back tire, so I'll put the brake on. So should be a little more safe here than my previous setup. So now we go into the blades. I got the wrong kind of blade somehow. Don't know how. Anyways, bought different ones. There's these like star patterns and different patterns. The other ones had some other shape, like an S or something like that. So these ones also have a star pattern. Interesting fact, see how these are more curved. These are called mulching blades, I think. And that's because the curvature in them, uh, it actually helps the grass kind of stay under the deck and get recut multiple times, aka kind of mulching the grass as you go. Whereas a standard blade like this is designed to more shoot the grass either out to the side where, you know, on your ejection side, whatever, or into a bag or whatever setup you had. So I bought new blades, as I showed you. I got new ones of these, cause as you may remember, this was unbelievably messed up. I don't even know how it was working. So I got a, another set to replace those. These, I also got a set to replace, but there's a lot of curvature here and I'm not really understanding why. These are deformed, so I don't know what they look like originally. I'm just gonna reuse the same bolts. I don't remember exactly how it goes, so I'm gonna fiddle with it right here and just try to make sure I understand. And then I'll get to the real action, set up a nice action cam. Okay, so you know, all these projects like this is kind of like Legos without the really fun instructions that also make it easier. So this is one of these frustrating points where it's like, I just don't know and I also don't feel like looking it up but I might have to I know how to set this up but you can see there's a big space there or I could flip it like that so that it's flush over this but then there's a big gap there it must be designed to have a gap I think honest to god I think I could do it either way and it would probably be fine I know some of you lawn kings lawn queens I love some feedback because I pretty much so I'm so sweaty I'd love some feedback because I'm not a lawn king and also I wanted to say I got the mulching blades because I don't do anything with my grass clippings because also I believe I mean I believe do whatever the fuck you want so you know don't let me tell you how to run your lawn but I personally for my lawns believe it's best to just cut the grass leave the grass there breaks down feeds the grass you know it's like it just keeps it in a cycle whereas if you're constantly taking the clippings out of the yard at some point you're gonna have to bring in some you know additional nutrients I mean you could do that in the form of compost or, or anything else but I think most of the time people use chemical fertilizers and stuff which is fine but to me it's like why do all that extra to work when I could just leave the grass there. I'm a simple man. I'm gonna Google it. F See, it hasn't even been like an hour. We're already using the ratchet set again. That's gotta mean something to somebody. They tell you to take the deck off to do this. I'm sure that's good advice. I didn't feel like it. This goes here. This side down. That's on the star. Then I decided I'm gonna do fat face. Oh god. Okay. It's on. It's uh, it actually is on. So now I just have to tighten it. The blade also has to be on the star. You're probably getting an idea of why they tell you to take the deck off. I'm an obstinate person. It's given me a lot of trouble throughout my life. I hate being told what to do. Sometimes you just gotta listen to other people though. Oh god, my arms are tired. Is that on? I mean that should be on. Don't sue me if it doesn't work. Hold on. I gotta verify. This is what the feel it looks like. Oh, real man, if Miss Winnie's wrong. Let's start over here. I actually don't need to take it all the way off. I just need to get it oriented. There we go. That's the money shot right there. Oh, Lord. All right, now I'm getting stoked. I'm gonna go take this bad boy for a ride after this. You already know that. I bet everybody knew that. Get some new mulch blades on there. I wanna see what it does to the grass that I'm going over. So the dude said use a torque wrench, which I do have, but I didn't feel like looking up the right torque. Ignorance is bliss. If he just never said that, I wouldn't feel guilty using my regular ratchet set. But now I'm like, oh, what if I'm fucking something up? I'm sure it's fucking fine. All right, that's pretty tight, but I'm not crushing it to death. First, you gotta line that little notch up with the little thing right there. That's on good. That thing, I think it's happy there. This part, it says blade or grass side right here. So make sure you're doing that right. Got this thing, but I gotta stick a bolt through it. Means I gotta reposition my body. Oh Lord. Okay, so that's in there. See, I almost had it when the deck was still on, but I had oriented it one star notch over. I don't know what the technical term for 
like a star notches. Did you know that it's mathematically impossible to draw a seven pointed star perfectly evenly? There you go. You're always learning something with me. Even if it's what not to do, like getting too many hundred foot extension cords. That was a lesson of what not to do. But then you saw the bright side and how I turned it around as something really positive. All right. These are both pretty tight. Whoa, that's gonna cut some grass, you know that. I'll just say, I don't know, I'm just gonna come out and say it. These f***ing little, oh, I said the right term the other day. Whatever these are, these little pins. This style, holy sh that was hard to get out. Uh, I'm just gonna do it without filming. Okay, well you are, I mean you guys already know this feeling. It's absolutely electric. I've got wonderful new blades on my mower. I'm about to go take a spin. Get the lawn looking fresh. I'm not even a lawn king, but I'm a f***ing about that right now. Okay. Get the hell out of here. Gotta race it down. Real gentle now. I forgot, I'm actually gonna inflate the wheels real quick. I know you guys are probably as excited as I am. It's so nice, I just filled up the tires all 10 PSI, topped off pretty. I got the new blades on this motherfucker. Mulching the grass now, it's gonna look great, I hope. And now guess what? I already used my bad blades to hit all the rocks. Now I got that over with. I'm, <laughs> I pray to God, I'll probably hit a few more, but. Oh, I was gonna do a little mowing for the camera. So let's do that then. Okay. Absolutely electric. I cannot get over that, dude. Look at these lines right here. I have been using shit blades forever. Whew, my God. Look at that, that's a, that's a two and it just took it to mud. See, this is what I, I actually like my grass like that because I never want to cut it again. Not really, I like it like this. That's, that's more how I like it. Uh, but you can see, wow, that did a good job. Really good job. And we're going to be in business. I might be a uh, uh, lawn, um, hmm, what's that term? Uh, lawn, uh, oh god. Not a page, but it's like, I'm in Game of Thrones and, oh, a squire. I might be a lawn squire. Now, you saw it, it looks good. There we go, I'm done. Rue, why do you want to get hit by vehicles so bad? <laughs> it looks amazing, baby. <laughs> but I have to dig a temporary hole for the compost because my compost is just getting so, so full. And normally the compost, you know, is a lot easier to maintain when we have the pigs because we can feed the pigs a lot of food scraps, which they just turn into manure. But when the pigs aren't here, then I just have a ton of scraps that I have to put in my little tin. So I'm gonna bury them. Just a little rocky. Oh, sorry, not me doing this in my house shoes. Now I have to wash out my disgusting compost pail. It's mosquito hour right now, so I'm gonna try to do this pretty quickly, but I'm gonna reuse the rainwater that collects in here to wash this out on my front porch. Oh, this is so foul, dude. The pail's washed out, but this filter is really disgusting like this is pretty gross but there's like maggots in it so I need to get rid of the filter on the top This afternoon while Finley was working on the lawnmower stuff, I just folded all of the laundry and remade the bed with nice, perfectly clean linens. And I feel good about that. Also made the couch, just trying to make it a little bit more nice in here. And I also washed a ton of our clothes, especially the ones that were getting really sweaty over the days of the heat wave and the ones that Finley was wearing yesterday when he was like covered in gasoline and engine oil. So now it's looking good in the new bedroom our third bedroom setup. Well, fourth, if you count the moving blanket bed on the night before we moved in here. I do wanna move this bed 
slightly over this way so that the frame is up against this little thing so I can use that as a side table and give this side table to Finley um, just for our temporary setup until obviously we have a good bedroom set up upstairs. But hopefully this will be the last time we need to move the bed. Fingers crossed. First football Sunday of the season and we moved the couch in here so that we could enjoy the TV. Ah! It's baller time. I know Larry. Hey y'all, happy Monday y'all. <laughs> Sometimes when I say y'all, I notice it more so here than anywhere else because now that we live farther up north, I'm like, every time I say it, I know that people will clock it. You know what I mean? And so I'm more aware of it now. But anyway, I just like saying it. it's funny. I have very little of an accent, but it's just funny when you say y'all or brother or hell yeah or do a southern accent even if it's kind of fake. Anyway. <laughs> I'm on a different tangent today. We're about to head out actually because Finley has a dentist appointment to replace one of his old fillings. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna go get some groceries. But the reason I'm just filming on Monday today is because on Saturday and Sunday of this weekend, we were pretty much just hanging out and trying to take a little break from all of the chaos that happened on Friday. So we were just taking a much needed, you know, rest, recoup, reevaluate and get back after it on Monday. So that being said, today I made a shit ton of phone calls. We decided on a roofer and called him today and he's gonna come over tomorrow to kind of just help us decide between exposed fastener metal and snap lock metal roofing because we are metal roof people. We think that it'll be a better option, although it is more expensive than asphalt shingle, but we're just gonna have him come out and look at like the color samples of those materials and all that kind of good stuff. And we're excited to be working with this company because there's still like a very reasonable price point compared to a different company <laughs> that we had come out where we were like, eh, okay, that's a little steep. You know what I mean? But they gotta make their bucks somehow. Anyway, so today I got that all handled and then I also found Found the dogs a vet because I was talking about this in a previous vlog but like they just haven't needed to go to the vet yet so I hadn't done it but there is a serious backlog of people trying to get into the vets around here because we live rurally and I didn't know that it would be this difficult to get in with a vet but I was calling around all morning and a lot of the vets were like oh yeah we don't accept new animals at all like we're booking into next year 2024 I was like what and so then I finally found found somebody who could take the dogs on Friday and they just have to go in for their nails and glands but yeah it was definitely kind of difficult I called around to like at least eight different vets and all of them were like nope no new appointments nope nope 2024 I was like what's happening but I finally found one that I'm excited about and it's like a team of all women and they seem super nice have great reviews so love that for us and then I also just spent a huge portion of today calling around to my primary care and my gynecologist being like hey I have an endocrinologist disappointment in December and I moved so I need you guys to fax over my medical records to my endocrinologist so that they have my medical history and I had to fill out like a release of information and I literally filled those out like at the end of August and they never did anything about them so I called the endocrinologist today just checking in being like hey did you ever get those forms and they were like no we never got them I'm like Okay, it's literally been two weeks. But anyway, <laughs> they said that they sent them in the mail rather than via fax, so that's why it's taking so long. So hopefully they'll get them eventually. Anyway, we have to head out here pretty soon. So I just wanted to say that today has been like a getting my shit together kind of a day and just doing my thing that I do best, which is calling around to a bunch of different places and looking at different quotes and rates and prices and looking at reviews and just doing all that kind of good stuff. So that's what I've been up to. I also ordered a ton of books over the weekend so that I can start getting more into my book club again because I've just been listening to way more like audiobooks which is fine and it helps a lot during the renovation process as well just to like be able to put on my headphones and also still be reading but um, I wanted to get back into like physical reading and my routine of doing that in the mornings and so I ordered some fun books that hopefully we'll get here and we can resume book club in October maybe do some kind of a spooky book or something like that on Mother Truck and Bookworms which is my book review bookstagram all that kind of good stuff so you can go follow that if you're interested and I also ordered some Zumba clothes so that I can motivate myself to 
um, finally get a job this week. Hopefully I'm going to pitch myself on Wednesday to a specific place. I'm going to take a class and then I'm going to pitch myself to the woman who's leading it because she's new to the area as well and she's trying to like start a new class in Brattleboro and so am I. So I'm gonna go and be like hey if you need other instructors, if you need a sub, you know I'm your girl. <laughs> anyway so I wanted to give you some positive updates at the end of this video because it obviously was quite chaotic for a lot of this video as well but things are looking up and we always survive. I will survive! You can go and support our renovations on Patreon and also just hear more about like the price of roofing and all these kinds of costs that go into the renovation. Here I'm being like super open about all of that on Patreon and if you're interested in that you know where to find me. All right I'll just see you guys in the next renovation vlog and hopefully we'll have various other projects to show you that are not um, as chaotic as this one was but Thank you for the love in advance. It was a uh, dark day on Friday, but the sun always comes out, right? As Mac Miller once said, haven't seen the sun in a while, but I heard that the sky's still blue, okay? It's still blue over here. Love you. All right, stay smiling, y'all.